the main man, the head dude, the biggest of big, the gargantuan of Gonzolas. Oh, you know what I mean. Well, dudes, you finally did it to him. You see, Fred is fried. Oh, dude. Sorry about that, man. My condolences. Thanks. But you know something? We've got a lot of eggheads in the game lab, and they've got some good stuff for you this week. We've got tips, tactics, reviews, and it's all here from Game Pro Magazine, bud. Yeah! The ultimate source of home and arcade video game knowledge. So, bud, what do you say we hit the screen and uh, get into a little SWAT action there, buddy? I know what you mean. I know we have work to do. But this one's for the Fredster. Secret weapons and tactics. Aha! I'm in the middle of one of your favorite carts again. Yep, this place definitely looks familiar. I must be in SWAT world. This is the home of the tips and tactics that separate the winners from the losers. So listen up close. Let's get underway with this warp trick in Crystalis for the NES. I'll be back. <laughs> Want to jump from one location to another at will? No sweat. All you got to do is hold down buttons A and B on controller 1 at the same time and press button A on controller 2. Every time you press button A, you warp. Warp City. Now here's one for a game which has become a favorite with everyone here on Game Pro. Maniac Mansion for the NES. If you've been hooked by this game, you know that you can never get too many tips. Watch this. To get the rusty key that sits on the top of the chandelier in the living room, get the blank cassette from the secret panel in the library. Now, that's the dark room to the far right when you first enter the mansion. Next, head for the green tentacles room. That room is located up the ladder from the shortwave radio room. Take the record that's sitting in the room. It's called a tentacle mating ritual recording. Now, bring the blank cassette and the recording to the rec room. You know, the room with the TV, stereo, and piano. All right, here's the easy part. Put the blank cassette in the tape recorder and put the record on the stereo. Turn them both on. A high-pitched whine will emit from the tape, shattering glass. Take the cassette you make down to the living room and play it. Now the chandelier will shatter and crash to the ground, and with it, the rusty key. Got some new carts coming in every day for the all-new Super Nintendo game system. And, bud, as fast as they make them, we're going to show them to you, okay? Now, today, we've got an all-time favorite now available for the SNES. You've played this game in the arcade, you've played the classic version on the NES, and you've played it on the Genesis. I'm talking about Ghouls and Ghosts, and, you know, now you're going to play it like you've never played it before. It's Super Ghouls and Ghosts! Yeah! Look at... Evil dude, evil dude, check him out. Now, they're not lying when they say super dude. I mean it. Sir Arthur the Knight's Lady has been kidnapped by the evil prince of darkness, Loki. And the sinister prince is also terrorizing the countryside with a horde of gruesome creatures led by the sneaky magician, Boo Hiss. Now, you're saying to yourself, I bet, yo, sup, buddy? I've heard this story before. What's going on? Now, okay, 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 I know you've heard it before, and if you've been playing Ghouls and Ghosts on your Genesis or Sega Master System, but just hang with me, okay, because things have just changed a tad. Now, the storyline may be the same, but the play of the game is totally different on the SNES, and when I say totally, I mean totally. I'm talking that every level of this popular game has been redesigned to bring you new meanies to fight, completely different bosses, and some totally fresh new obstacles. Now, Sir Arthur's Journey is to find the low-down Loki. It covers four levels, and every level has two stages. And guess what, dudes and dudettes? The ending of this game is actually a new beginning. Yeah! I think I'll leave that to you to figure that out, okay? Now, if you've enjoyed the graphics for this spine tingler when you've played it on the NES, just check it out, okay? Because the background and the characters on the SNES are just going to blow you out of the water. 
you know? Just wait till you see these rotating rooms. It's just awe-inspiring. I'm talking awesome. And soundtrack, yo, orchestrated tunes, yeah. We got this, like, background music that just sends chills right up your spine. And you've got these, like, earthquake sound effects that just have you looking around going, but am I in San Francisco or what? Yeah, Super Ghouls and Ghosts. It's a welcome addition to the Ghouls and Ghosts family. And if you've got your SNES in this cart, you want to spend some time on it. Guaranteed. When we come back, defensive tactics to shut down the offense of John Madden football. Only on K-Pro. But you can't always stick around the house because... Jimmy, get down here. In emergencies, you got to travel light. You are type for Nintendo Game Boy. See how good you really are. What world? All right, I'm on my way. Here we go. Hey, bud. Thought I'd march along with you. Salute. How does he do that? Secret weapons and tactics. Ha, ha, ha. Whoa. Hey, man. Look at that. Frozen in fear. <laughs> Look around me, what do you see? It's Sword of Sodan for the Genesis game system, and here's a level warp code that'll take you right past any of the first four levels in the game. Check this out. Now before this game allows you the privilege of skipping four levels, you gotta show the game what you're made of. That means you have to get the number one high score on the game list. Huh, no big deal, dudes, because the scores on the top five table are pretty easy to beat. Now once you make it to Top Banana, you get to log your name in the number one position. Hey, forget about your name and enter this password. H-I-N-A-N-P colon and the right parenthesis. Huh, I don't know what it means either, but it works. Trust me. Once this password is in the high score table, you are cleared to skip any of the first four levels in the next game you play. You skip the levels by hitting the start button on controller 2. Now get that. Not controller 1, but controller 2. And that is all there is to it. As long as we're doing the password thing, here's a couple combinations that will skip you right to the semifinals or the finals of TV Sports Basketball for the TurboGrafx-16 system. If you want to go directly to the semifinals in TV Sports Basketball, enter H-V-F-U-V-B-R-Z-E-E-U-N-D. Now, if you want to get into the finals without all the early competition and do some serious slamming, enter CED SCB LKX KK JVP. And today we're going to take a look at some new developments over at SEGA. Now, you remember how the dudes at SEGA got the 16-bit jump on Nintendo when they hit the market first with their Genesis game system, right? Well, it looks like SEGA's on the cutting edge again with a new portable color game system called the SEGA Game Gear and the soon-to-be available CD-ROM games. Yeah! Going out the store door at $149.95, this all-color portable system puts the Game Boy to shame when it comes to good-looking graphics and happening sound. This game hardware runs on six AA batteries, so you might want to consider the optional rechargeable battery pack and AC adapter because this energy-thirsty unit drains batteries after three or four hours. Okay, bud? So check it out. Around Christmas time, Sega will introduce a VHF UHF tuner that'll turn your Game Gear into a TV! You're stoked! Now, if you really, really, really want to get some futuristic stuff, how about the Genesis CD-ROM? You've heard about it, you've read about it, well in 1992, you're gonna be stoked cause you're gonna be playing on it, that's right! CD video games are just around the corner with this new machine that'll make its debut in Japan during the next few months. The machine is designed to plug into your current Genesis system and will not only mean major improvements in graphic and game quality, just think about what it's going to be like to hear CD quality sound just like in the arcades. Ooh, I got goosebumps, don't you? Now, 
We don't know the price or what games will be introduced with the new system, so stay tuned because when we find out, you find out. I promise. <laughs> Ruth Brett Snyder from San Jose, California. Hey, Game Pro. John Madden Football. Terrific game for the Genesis. But the computer player cuts right through my defense. I just can't stop him. Can you help? Monster question, dude. Now, you remember old Fred who we showed you at the beginning of the show? Well, that was the question that put my man Fred in a deep freeze. But... We got an answer anyway, so check it out, because we have a defensive formation that'll send the computer back to the locker room talking to itself. Huh, choose a dime formation, cover set, and CB blitz. Next, tap the B button just once to gain control of the left cornerback. Now move the cornerback up the line of scrimmage. When the ball is snapped, charge in there with the cornerback and nail the quarterback. And for a little bonus, kind of uh, in honor of my buddy old Fred, you should know that this defensive trick works best when you're using Kansas City. Pittsburgh, San Francisco, Philly, Buffalo, L.A., or Atlanta as your team? Excellent question, my man. Nice. And, hey, you also won yourself a Game Pro t-shirt, and it's on its way right side up. A quick reminder of the rest of you out there. Put it to the test, dudes. Put us to the test. Send in those hard questions and keep the Game Lab eggheads on edge. We like it that way. And if we put your question on TV, I'll take this t-shirt and throw it right out to you. Watch for the address at the end of today's show. My name is Scott Stauffer, and I completed the NES game Bart Simpson vs. the Space Mutants with a score of 95,950. Hi, my name is Sean Reynolds from Columbus Junction, Iowa, and I smashed the King of Eggerland in the adventures of Lolo 2 for the Nintendo. Hi, I'm Jason West from Martinsburg, Pennsylvania. I dodged Stealth ATF for the Nintendo. I got 315,900. Whoa, that was strong stuff, you guys. Your one-year freebie to GamePro Magazine is on its way, baby. And if you want to win, you got to send them in. Cowabunga, dude! Secret tips to enter the bonus stages and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for your Game Boy when we return on Game Pro. Secret weapons and tactics. Ah, yeah, just another stroll through the castle. You know, one of our classic favorites around here is the Steinax for the NES. Now, like all classics, they need to be spiced up every now and again. So check out a tip that'll put some new life into the successful game cart. Have fun. If you want to achieve invincibility, bring up the title screen. Then press up, 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 then down, left, right, then up again. Let's run it down one more time. First... Bring up the title screen, then press up four times in a row. Next, press down, then left, right, and up again. That's it. Now go master those monsters. Hey dudes, I'm bringing you one for those heroes in a half shell. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the Fall of the Foot Clan for the Game Boy. Now, you know how Splinter will sometimes come to your rescue and bail you out with an energy refill if you can beat him in a bonus round? Well, sometimes a turtle has to go to the master instead of waiting for the master to come to him. You know what I'm saying. Anyway, check out some of these secret locations where you can enter a bonus round and fill up with some badly needed energy. In stage one, level one, you need to go to the middle barrel in the picture and kneel down and break it. Now, head into the bonus game and take on Splinter to bring up some of the energy meter. In stage two, level one, if you can jump near the right-hand side of the second pillar, you'll be bounced right into the bonus round. And if you're still running low on energy, check this out. Take another jump near the left-hand side of the fourth moving pillar for another crack at a bonus round. Pretty cool, huh? Cowabunga, dudes. Review. Very 
now it's time to check out what the Game Lab Techno Terrors have to say about two new games we have for you this week. First out of the blocks this week, Wolverine for the NES. That's right, Marvel Comics, dudes. We've got one of the X-Men back in action along with the ultimate bad dude, Magneto and his gang of chumpsters. Now, before we run this one down for you, remember, we'll be rating this game to check out the graphics, the sound effects, whether the game gives you a true challenge, and the fun factoroony, factmeister. Hey, factoroo, Wolverine, all right. So, if you didn't like the first X-Men game cart, well, who did? But, just because the first one was sort of a major bummer, don't turn your back on the sequel because... Wolverine things work out a whole lot better than the first go-round. Now, for those of you who haven't checked out the X-Men comics, let me bring you up to speed on the Wolverine, okay? The dude is a mutant with an adamantium metal skeleton and six indestructible claws that go a foot long each. Yo, this dude could use quite a manicure. Now, even though Wolverine can heal quickly, he still needs the power and energy he gets from the burgers and power potion he scarfs up as he moves through the tough nine level challenge, fighting awesome bad guys at every turn. And we're talking some Mondo serious bad guys here, bud. The X-Men arch enemy Magneto is back and he's mad. And he's brought a few of his buds to help him take care of those long fingernails attached to Wolverine. Uh-oh. Sabretooth has joined in this time along with that entire band of ruthless villains, the mutant terrorists. So my friend, how did we rate this game? Well for starters, this game card sports a side view, 360 degree scrolling presentation of the game instead of this bird's eye view that was used in the original X-Men game card. So you know something? We're off to a good start. Yeah! The music's pretty solid and it's got this good beat, but you know, we gotta diss the sound effects because they're kind of average. Eh. And challenge? Well, my friend, this game is tough! It is tough! Tough as Magneto's army! Yes, let's hear it there! Come on, kids, speak the truth! You'll spend a whole lot of time just trying to get the best of this game! And while the game's a major step forward in LJN's crusade to bring the popular X-Men to the screen, well, there's still a ways to go, but we hope they keep on trying. Hey, you sound like you like it a lot, man. You know, I love the X-Men comics. I wonder if they're thinking about turning more of these dudes into video games. Oh, yeah! That would be happening, bud! Very happening. All right. Thanks, B-Man. You're welcome. Let's check out Castlevania 2, Belmont's Revenge for the Game Boy. Now, if you love the original Castlevania like I did, then you're going to be totally psyched when you pop this new Dracula adventure onto your small screen. And as the saying goes in Transylvania, a vampire's hunter's work is never done. Blah. Well, the original bloodsucker himself has just made a blood milkshake out of Christopher Belmont's firstborn, Soleil, and Belmont is not a happy dude. Now, if you thought the original Castlevania was a nightmare, wait till you get a load of part two. Instead of being challenged by one castle like in the first episode, check it out, gamers. Five castles, each containing evils unimaginable by mere mortals like ourselves. Man, you don't even get near Drac until you get past the first four levels. There's plant, crystal, rock, and cloud, with each level's environment matching its name. The weapons? Totally happening. Christopher's coffin crushing arsenal is sharper than ever, including a rootin' tootin' fireball shootin' morning star, the battle axe, and holy water. And he's gonna need them all, because the dragster has set out plenty of traps and snares to put the crush on Christopher Belmont. I bet you're wondering how we rated it, right? Here it goes. All around awesome. The graphics are good, not the best we've seen on a Game Boy, but good enough for serious play, dudes. The cart has totally terrific tunes. Like I said, if you thought Castlevania gave you something to work on, you ain't seen nothing yet, baby. As for a fun factor, well, you just gotta love the Castlevania series. I mean, it's got it all. Graphics, guts, and gore galore. Huh, a real winner. Stoked. The Draft Man. Yo, chill, cause we got the moves down cold for Snow Brothers on the net, so put your thumbs on hold, we're coming back on Game Pro. <laughs> I'm Bo Berry from Manhattan Beach, California, and I have a tip for the Game Pro fans. You can play a short time version of the Snow Brothers for the Nintendo by just pressing select at the title screen. Thank you for the tips, dude. Won yourself a Game Pro team in the mail. Yeah! 
All right, time's up for today, but we're coming back again next week with more super fresh stuff to make you the best gamer on the block. You know it. That's right, bud. And don't forget, we're waiting for you to make the mailman mad with all your questions and tips so you can put yourself on video. Get gutsy. Send them here. Game Pro, P.O. Box 1678, Venice, California, 90291. All right, cool, baby. That's it for today. For Brenna on the B-Man and me, J.D. Roth, take care and peace.